In 2001, when Sega announced the demise of the Dreamcast and its exit from the hardware business, I was kind of in a state of shock. Despite years of poor sales, I still wasn't quite ready for the news. But life goes on and you make the best of what's given to you. Dreamcast games kept coming out that year, and I kept supporting it with games like Capcom vs SNK2 and NFL 2K2. Of course, some games stayed region specific, and you had to do a bit of digging to find them. Luckily, I had been a fan of the UK released official Dreamcast magazine, and had purchased it when I could. I really enjoyed their in-depth articles and reviews, which tended to go quite a bit further than the US rags that gave you four sentences that were often inaccurate. It was here that I first encountered the Dreamcast version of Fighting Vipers 2, a port of the AM2 developed Model 3 Polygon fighting game and sequel to the Model 2 original. I had been a fan of the first arcade game and its Sega Saturn home version, so I was immediately interested. To my utter dismay, the UK Dreamcast magazine had not been so kind to the game, dropping a 6 on it, complaining of anemic additions, and even comparing the graphics to what you'd see on the Nintendo 64. Since there was no US release of this for the Dreamcast, I'd need to import it, and it sounded like something that might not be worth the trouble. I decided to hold off and wait till later, when I could possibly find it cheaper at places like eBay. In this episode, we will be looking at the Dreamcast version of Fighting Vipers 2, the only home version of this game we'd ever receive. The gameplay of Fighting Vipers 2 is very much the same as the first. The core mechanics center around fast and flashy combos that are easy to pull off. Nearly every move you do leads into a standard 2 or 3 hit combo, which then can be chained into a few more. Air juggling is prevalent, and you can bounce your opponent off the cage to eke out every ounce of damage possible. Like the first game, each fighter has armor on their upper and lower bodies. With enough damage and a well-timed guard and counter maneuver, that armor can be destroyed. Once gone, you will take additional damage. On the plus side, if you are armorless, you are both faster on your feet and your attacks have a bit more pep. It's not a good trade, however, as you take an additional 25% damage from each hit that lands. Guard and counter moves, which are recognizable by their flashing, also have the ability to stop combos and send your opponent flying through the cage. It also has your usual assortment of fall recoveries, counters, and special attacks for each character. The most interesting of these is the Tech Guard, which gives you the defensive ability to stop a combo in its tracks and counter it with one of your own. This can be done for both high and low attacks, and also gives you the ability to sidestep immediately, getting your back away from the cage, or setting you up for a throw. Also new to the Fighting Vipers universe is the Super KO, a special move that can win you the bout in only a single round. If you are in a state of no armor, you can land a Super KO, a powerful finishing move that ends the fight no matter the round. These moves are difficult to pull off because of the timing and circumstances. It's possible to blow off your own armor and wreck the game in single round battles, but you'll need to be damn good to do it. You only get one chance to do it, and if you miss it, you're left in a fight where you take way more damage. I feel that if you are a fan of the first game, this one is really easy to jump into. The base combat is so similar, you can have immediate success, and the huge assortment of difficulties guarantees you'll find one that you can handle. The modes that you can choose are pretty standard. It has the arcade, which is just a one-on-one -on -one recreation of the Model 3 original. Here you will face opponents in a new route system, or what amounts to a variable difficulty. Depending on how well you perform, you are dynamically paired with weaker or stronger fighters as you progress. If you are sucking it up and your skills need training, the game kinda takes it easy on you. If you are belting out combos and winning like a champ, the harder it becomes. This mode also has the potential of multiple end bosses depending on how you do. The versus mode is both a one-on-one -on -one battle, as well as a team fight with up to eight different combinations of matches. This version also has a watch mode, where you can see the CPU battle itself. The random mode is just an arcade mode with the route system randomized, and the practice mode is pretty self-explanatory. The survival mode is a bare-bones fight against the CPU in single-round combat with a time limit. 
You get no life replenishment and fight until you are defeated or the timer runs out. To round out the package, you get two new fighters, Charlie and Emmy, as well as a couple of new boss guys. The graphics of Fighting Vipers 2 are a mixed bag. The Dreamcast is not known for its Model 3 conversions, and unfortunately, this one has issues as well. But first, the good news. The fighters in the cages all look great. They are brightly colored and the polygon counts are nice and high, and they all are razor sharp. There are nice effects like transparencies here and there, and the variety in them is quite impressive. You get a crane enclosed in glass, a museum with a massive T-Rex skeleton in the background you can smash, and even a giant hydroelectric dam. Newcomer Charlie has a freaking BMX bicycle on its back, Emmy a giant teddy bear, and of course Honey makes a return with her ass hanging out. Sandman is practically wearing a motorcycle engine for armor. It runs great too, the performance never becomes an issue and almost always remains silky smooth. If I could leave it there, I'd be happy to report all as well, but of course I can't. This game has some rough looking backgrounds and a handful of the stages. The main problem are the blurry textures that clash terribly with the sharp fighters and cage graphics. Some stages are so bad it's like looking at a previous generation's titles. This is frustrating because some stages have clear and solid looking backgrounds that do the arcade justice, making you wonder if the development team just quickly wrapped it up and finish the product to get it out the door before consumers jumped ship. With games like Soul Calibur and Dead or Alive 2 showing 3D environments that were nothing short of amazing on the same hardware, these stages left much to be desired. One. Let the action begin. Go! <laughs> The music of the first Fighting Vipers never really grabbed me as strongly as it did AM2's other brawler, Virtua Fighter. It never really carried the same weight or emotion, but I happened to enjoy the soundtrack to Fighting Vipers 2 a whole lot more than I expected. It's the kind of stuff you'll want to rip to your phone and listen to while you're pulling weeds in the garden or shoveling out snow in the driveway. I've picked out a few of my favorites to give you some idea of what you'll be hearing. The biggest issues that dog Fighting Vipers 2 are issues that have been around since Sega started bringing its 3D fighting games home. This is a bare bones experience start to finish, and offers little in the way of extra features or bells and whistles. At its heart, what you get here is no different than what you got in the Saturn version of Virtual Fighter 2, a game that was released six years prior in a previous generation. There's no story to speak of, no endings to show the fighters' motivations, and again, no additional modes that really expand the replay value. This was released well after Fighters Megamix, where I felt Sega had turned the page on barebones ports like this. I mean, even Last Bronx had given us some extra story content. By this point, Namco had been stuffing extra modes into their home fighting games for the better part of six years, with a fine example of how to do it on the very same hardware. 
it was frustrating that Sega never seemed to understand how important it was to give a little extra when these games came home. Yet I still found myself really enjoying Fighting Vipers 2. I still liked how it looked, how it played, and how it sounded, and it very much had that Sega arcade feel that made it so easy to pick up and play. The unfortunately named Last Boss is a blast to play too. This won't displace the likes of Dead or Alive 2 or Soul Calibur, but definitely has enough going for it to be worth a purchase. The Japanese version goes around $60 or so, but the PAL release can go for twice that. Fighting Vipers 2 is part of a legacy of games that Sega is quietly letting just die. It's been nearly 20 years since this game's release, and aside from this port, this game has never been remade, reissued, or re-released on any other platforms. Aside from some pretty Japanese girls cosplaying Honey every so often, you wouldn't even know these games existed at all today. Since the majority of the people that made these games are no longer with Sega, it would probably be next to impossible to bring them back with any real success, particularly the less appreciated stuff like this one. I would love to see Sega make some compilations for these games on modern hardware, however. There are so many Model 1, Model 2, and Model 3 arcade games that could go into these types of releases that you really have to wonder why Sega doesn't put them together. As for whether or not Fighting Vipers 2 was a winner on the old Dreamcast, I'd say it's at least good enough to take it for a spin a couple of times. If you love to play old school arcade games where you can just play for 10 or 15 minutes and turn it off without a worry in the world, this one is what you're looking for. If you are searching for Soul Calibur style depth, keep on marching because you won't find it here. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.